One of the most interesting options for black within the Slav complex uh, is the Chebenenko Slav with a6. It's introduced in its most basic form after d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and now a6. Um, but there are several move orders which can lead to similar structures. This is a, a remarkable idea which was invented by the renowned trainer uh, Chebenenko. Um, essentially, the purpose behind the move um, is, in the first instance, to make a waiting move to see what white's going to do. Um, that seems like a ridiculous approach in the opening, but actually um, it's not entirely clear what white's next move is. Um, for instance, if he plays e3, He's going to block in his bishop temporarily. If he brings his bishop out to f4 or g5, then it becomes more attractive for black to take on c4 because that bishop can be hit, for instance, on f4 with knight d5. And um, So as a waiting move, it actually has some function. Also, it prepares b5, which is a very useful um, move to have, especially if black were to capture on c4. And the final... Uh, point behind it, which is really quite remarkable, is that queen b3 um, is a key resource for white throughout the Slav uh, in response to an early bishop f5. Um, so for instance, if black plays bishop f5 here, white can take and play queen b3. And the idea behind a6, or one of the ideas, is that queen b3 can be met by rook a7, just protecting this, uh, this weak pawn on b7. And that looks like uh, an awful place to put a rook. But on the other hand, white's queen on b3 really is only fulfilling the function of attacking the pawn on b7 in any event. So um, rook a7 is, is quite an elegant way to deal with, um, with that plan. So what are white's main uh, responses and uh, main ways of, of playing against this move? Well... A natural response to look at is just a4, um, which essentially neutralizes the, the effects of black's move, because now b5 is, is not really going to be on the cards or it's not strengthened. Um, this can lead to, to very interesting play after, for instance, e6, bishop, g5, and now a5 is possible. But if black plays knight bd7, White has a choice between either taking on d5, where we have a, a Carlsbad pawn structure, but with a white pawn already on a4, which affects the plans quite a lot because white can't play b4, b5 so easily because the black pawn is going to come to a5 and just control that square. Um, so that's an interesting option. If white plays e3, then black can play queen a5 with a type of Cambridge Springs defense, but one which arguably is, is worse for white than the normal Cambridge Springs because this pawn on a4 means that he doesn't have a3 to kick a, a black bishop um, who appears on b4. So a4 is, uh, is an interesting um, move. e3 is another core response. Um, to the Chebenenko Slav. Black normally follows with b5. And now, for instance, the, the older line with b3, um, bishop g4, bishop e2, and e6. And this has proved quite resilient for black over a number of games. And his bishop as well uh, developed outside the light square pawn chain. And he's going to have pretty easy development of his remaining pieces, even if white gains the two bishops. Uh, and, and these center pawns are going to be extremely solid for black. So that's a line which hasn't caused him too many problems. A more interesting line for white is to play c5. And uh, this quite aggressively gains queenside space. White prepares, for instance, b4 and a4, hitting the pawn chain on the queen side. In some positions, white might be prepared to sacrifice a piece for two pawns on the queen side by taking on b5 where you'd have these very strong pawns on uh, b4 and c5 uh, prepared to, to run up the board.